The book of Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 15, this great church at Ephesus, you can read about it, Acts 19, had really got started. And the first three chapters are full of what's known as superlative language. If we were to all say superlative, it, just, it, it means exceeding, riches, abundant, things such as that, just to the extreme. And so we're going to be looking at the glory of the church today in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. And uh, part of this is one of Paul's prayer. He prayed at least two prayers in the book of Ephesians. About five or so such prayers we find in his epistles. And he says this, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, in love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is what he prayed, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Yes, Lord. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding, that's another one of those superlatives, exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Getting superlative, not just power, but mighty power. Yeah. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Yeah. Far above, not just above, but far above yeah. all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named. Not only in this world, but in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet. So Jesus has conquered all. Gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That is your destiny. You're going to rule and reign with Christ here on earth. And then in the new heavens, new earth throughout eternity. And then the church, which is his body... The fullness of him that filleth all in all. And so we're just going to look for just a few moments at the glory of the church. I wonder if we could pray again. Let's ask God to do everything he wants to do with his word today. Yes. God, I glorify you. I love you. I thank you for this great group of folks that have come, God, to hear and receive of the word of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Release faith in our hearts and spirits today, God. Yes. And God lodge in our spirits. Give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. How great you are and what an incredible thing we're a part of. We're not part of a lodge or a club or or some just little thing. But God, this is everything. This is the plan you had from eternity past. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And God, we glorify you. We love you, God. And ever let us live in the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We submit to you. We resist the devil. He shall flee. And God, we glorify you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. In Jesus' name. If you don't mind, let everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And turn to a neighbor and just say, God is good. God is good. And you can be seated in the name of the Lord. So we get to verse 15. We get to Ephesians 1.15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Faith in the Lord Jesus. And so the Lord Jesus, anytime a Palestinian Jew like Paul said, the Lord, he's talking about Jehovah. So he's sitting here saying, the Jehovah Jesus. Yes. And uh, your faith in the Lord Jesus. So everybody's got faith. Everybody's got a measure of faith. Not everybody's got saving faith. Everybody's got faith. You got faith when you put your car key in your ignition, even though I know that's old school. Nobody puts keys in ignitions anymore. But I do. I've got a 212. But most people don't. But when you press that button and push the brake in, you got faith when you turn your light switch on you got faith when you go to the sink and you turn the water on you've got faith there's going to be water coming out all right you've got faith when you step make the next step on this concrete floor you're not going to cave in like dathan and a byram it's not going to swallow you up you know you've got faith that the roads on the way to the church are going to be open everybody's got faith it's just what do you have faith in of course we need faith in the ultimate it is 
our selfishness wrestles against faith in God. And I hate to put it that way, but it's just true that we ask God for something and it doesn't happen the way we want it on our time schedule or he answers and says no. Then our selfishness, well, God doesn't love me. I can't trust God. On and so forth. But you can trust God. All things are working together for your good. Oh, yeah. To those who love the Lord, who are the called according to His purpose. And sometimes when He does not answer that prayer, how we wanted it, or the way we wanted it, or even answered it all, it is because He loves us. Yes. He knows what's best. Amen. Sometimes it's because a demonic spirit fights for 21 days, like in the time of Daniel. People say, well, God's stronger than that. Why can't He just send it? Well, He could. But, you know, angels play a part as well. Angels have free will, or they couldn't have fallen and become demons if they didn't have free will. Right. So he lets them play a part in the unfolding drama of redemption as well. Yes. So he does all things well. Yes, he does. And we just ask it, seek it, knock if we keep on praying. Yes. Yesterday's prayers unanswered are to be prayed again today. Oh. And so we have faith in the Lord Jesus that God became a man. Yes. The Father is the invisible. The Son is the visible. Right. The Word is the visible. In the Lord Jesus, in love, we're unto all the saints. So at Ephesus, man, they loved everybody. That's they right. just loved all the saints. They were like, yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way we need to be. We need to love everybody. Amen. Yes, no. And uh, have a love to all the saints, and and uh, by this shall all men know you're my disciples, that you have love one to another. Amen. All right. And so then verse 16 is so amazing. Paul says, I cease not to give thanks for you. So when's the last time you gave thanks for church people? Amen. Come on. Paul did. Amen. And it wasn't because they came and did something for him and all that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he had all kinds of stuff happen to him. He just gave thanks because they're fellow people in the body of Christ. Amen. Yes. I thank God for church people. Amen. Come on. And uh, thank God for new life. Thank God there's a beacon of truth and love, yes. holiness and righteousness in the area. And so cease not to give thanks for you. So it's okay to just give thanks for church people. Amen. And uh, that's a good thing. Making mention of you in my prayer. So he would mention the church at Ephesus in his prayers. Yeah. And then verse 17, that connective word that. If you don't mind, let everybody say that. Yeah. That. So this is what he's praying. He's saying this is what I'm going to pray for you guys or what I do pray. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Father of glory. When, it's, when you see God in the New Testament, according to 1 Corinthians 8, 6, we know one God, the Father. So you can usually just punch in the Father. That the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. The Father of glory. That which is preeminent. That which is uh, effervacious. That which is which is preponderance in light. Yeah. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, everything that's glorious, God is glorious, and then He's the Father of everything that's glorious. When you, when you get the Holy Ghost, He was the Father of that plan of salvation. He's the Father of everything that's glorious. The Father of glory may give unto you the Spirit. If you don't mind, let everybody say the Spirit. The Spirit. This is evidently our human spirit coupled with God's Holy Spirit becoming one spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Uh -huh. The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. Now, not just spirit of wisdom. We all need to walk the way of wisdom, right? Amen. We need to walk according to Scripture, according to the way of wisdom. Amen. And uh, everybody should desire the wise life. Oh, yeah. The spirit of wisdom and revelation mm -hmm. Revelation is that which cannot otherwise be known. God just has to reveal it to you. He has to expose it to you. Yeah. But notice this. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Yes. Hello. The one God who is a spirit, His manifestation as the Son, mm -hmm. the Father and the Son in one person, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. 
That we would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, not of just who he is theologically, but every part of his characteristic, his holiness, his justice, his righteousness, his love, just as a coin has two sides and then a third side in its thickness that goes around with the little ridges in it, you know, that that's kind of how God is. He's got mercy, truth, love, got holiness, justice righteousness judgment yes. and the spirit he's all these things oh, yeah. okay so that we would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation mm -hmm. in the knowledge of him okay wisdom how do I please you God I want to walk in a way that pleases you. Yes. I want my thoughts to be pleasing to you. Yes. I want my attitudes to be pleasing to you. Oh, yeah. I want my actions to be pleasing to you. Oh, yeah. So this is what Paul's praying for the Ephesians. To walk in wisdom towards God. Yeah. And his church. Walk in wisdom. And then the revelation in the knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. Just God open my mind that I can behold wonderful things out of your word. And of, of revelation in him. This is how I please God. This is I lift my hands. I worship. I run. I dance. I, I visit the fatherless and the widows. I keep myself unspotted from the world. I, I have revelation in the knowledge of you. Yes, God. And so we just have to have that. And all revelation is going to conform to the Word of God. You will never have anything revealed to you that is outside of Holy Scripture. Two of the largest uh, religions in the world that would not be in con conforming to Scripture would both claim to have had revelation from angels that did not come from God. They may have been angels, but they were fallen angels. And uh, Paul had said in Galatians, Though I, for angel of heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. So, this is something to pray for church people. This is something to pray for the born-again believers. That we would have the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowledge of God. And then the eyes, if you don't mind, if somebody say the eyes. Yeah. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Oh, yeah. God just opens your spiritual eyes. And so just as Satan lied in the garden... Um, and uh, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to be as gods. And really it was darkness. Darkness came because sin clouded. And sin always clouds. That's the reason when a culture gets into sin, it's always going to make wrong decisions. Because it, it gets clouded. So... Paul's praying that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, we'd shake off sin, we'd shake off the world's narrative and walk in truth. Because the world's narrative is just wrong. Being enlightened, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is, is you're going to rule and reign with Jesus. You're totally unelected. He elected you. You chose Him. But uh, that's that's the truth of the matter is that you've got the plan of salvation we've got the way for people to get to heaven and so eyes of our understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling the hope of his calling so why did you and i get saved so this is what we need to understand is the hope of his calling so the church is some big deal in the eyes of god it may be little in the eyes of man. But it is big in the eyes of God. It is a pearl of great price. It is a treasure in a field. It's a huge deal. It's, it's everything in the eyes of God. We're his sons. We're his daughters. We're his bride. We rule and reign. We're his body. So it's this massive deal to God. So the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. So what is the hope of His calling? And so you can't just think of it right now. It's not just the hope of His calling is that He'll answer prayer, He'll heal, He'll do great things, He'll fill people with the Holy Ghost, people get baptized, will have their sins washed away, on and on and so forth. But what's the hope of His calling is you realize that you are saved and one day when we see him, we're going to be like him. And you're going to have a new body. 
and you're going to be kings and priests forever. So shall you ever be with the Lord of the increase of his government. There shall be no end. So what is the hope of this calling? So you got something really big. It's not just a Billy Graham crusade. You come and shake in somebody's hand. Right. It's not just saying a sinner's prayer. Right. You are initiated, baptized in Jesus' name into his body with the, the same spirit that he had when he fills you with the Holy Ghost. That's why it's called a new birth experience. Oh, yeah. You repent of your worldly birth and turn towards God and His hope and His love towards you. And then through water and spirit, you must be born again. You're born into the body of Christ. Yes. Satan can no longer touch you. You're in the body of Christ. You have the Creator God. You read Genesis 1, that God that created everything lives on the inside of you. Lord. It's incredible. Yes. And that's where people say, well, do you, do you have to speak with tongues when you get the Holy Ghost? I'm always amazed that's all you do. <laughs> I mean, we're little tiny pieces of specks of dust. And the Creator's woo, coming to live inside. You're thinking, blah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> we just blow up or something. So he, he chose for us. To, that's, we know we have the Holy Ghost the first time when we speak with tongues. We should be like Paul. He said, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. So speaking with tongues is not a one-time deal. And uh, this is how you mortify the deeds of the body through the Spirit. The Word is the sword of the Spirit, speaking with tongues, praying in the Spirit, these type things. And so this is just what happens. So you may know the hope of his calling. Yes. And so that you and I, and this is the whole thing about holiness. Holiness isn't, you mean I have to give up so much of that stuff that sends everybody to hell? I mean, it, it really is ridiculous when it comes down to it. Okay. You know, I can't dress in a way that destroys the society and everything. And, you know, what do you mean I can't, you know, hurt the temple of the Holy Ghost? I mean, it's, it's really, when you really see what God has done, you're wanting to please God in everything. It's no longer legalism. And let me just give you a pro tip here. The term legalism, legalist, is found zero times in the Bible. That's right. Most people think that is the entire purpose of the Bible. Is Well, that's just legalism. It's like, well, show me that in the Word. Yeah. Right. Word? That's right. society. Okay. Who needs the Bible when everybody knows it? <laughs> and, but, you know, obviously it's about relationship. We understand it's not about rules and these type of things. But God does want us to be holy. Holiness is a, is a benefit. It is not a have to. It's a get to. Yes. That, okay, everybody, when you were born, you were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You and I, we were all going to hell right. for eternity. Mercy. We were never getting out. Right. We were burning. We were getting tortured. There's tormented, as the Bible calls it. There's worms there that die not. They crawl through the people of hell. Mm. You rest not there and night. Could you ever imagine being as tired as you've ever been, where your eyes, you can't hold them open, being a million times more tired than that with a worm crawling, and being thirsty at the same time, and you can never get a drink? Ever. Ever. Mm. Never. Yeah. Okay, this was what all of us, because of our rebellion, mm -hmm. How many sins does it take to get you to that place I just described? One. One little white lie. One little steal. One little take the pen that didn't belong to you. You're in. Come on. One little bad attitude. You're in. Come on. Okay? And so it's God's great love and kindness and mercy that made a way of escape. He is holy. Amen. And so he made the Garden of Eden. He loved you and I so much, he made it 
perfect, the garden of delight. We had a relationship with him all the time. We were in the loins of, of our father Adam there in the garden of Eden. Everything was cool. There was this one tree. He just he set everything up. The garden of Eden could have been somewhere around 120 miles square. Nobody knows exactly, but it could have been 60 miles square. It could have been 120. It could have been 240. It was huge. It was a big place. I mean, because you had all kinds of animals there and every kind. And so everything was for you. There was just one little tree to say there's free choice here. Come on. Because God said I want he doesn't want robots. He wants free moral agents. He wants people that through eternity will choose to say, I love you. Yes. All right? And so all he had was one tree out of maybe hundreds of miles of delight with no sinful nature and anything. And we ate the tree. Mm. That we were not supposed to eat. And so that seed of rebellion went into us. It just, it got into us. And so they say babies come out crying, not laughing. Because they're in sin. And so you don't have to teach a child to steal. We have to train, train up a child. We have to train them not to steal. Come on. And we don't have to train them to hit their brother or their sister. They do that. Right. To train them not to hit their brother and their sister. Right. We don't have to train them to lie. They're going to lie. Right. Have to train them not to lie. Right. And so because we're in sin. Come on. And so holiness is this lifestyle of going back really to the Garden of Eden. How everything's supposed to be. The world is the world of temptation. Trust me, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were very intentional in making Apple products back in the 70s. With the bite of the apple, that did mean <laughs> that that is temptation constantly in front of you. That it's going to be a device that you can use for good or evil. And so... You have to be extremely careful. Be careful with children in those devices. Um, I would never let a child or a teenager even look at um, electronic devices unsupervised. There's a lot of dangers there. If you read the techno gurus like Jaron Lanier and others, Jaron Lanier has created like 11 different musical instruments himself. He teaches at Google University. But basically all of them, all the tech heads, and then all of the world leaders. I don't know of an exception to this. I'm sure there are exceptions to it. But basically almost all of them, if not all of them, all say their advice is you don't, they don't let their children and teenagers have telephones. They don't let them surf the internet. Nothing. That's for us so they can control us. We won't go there. Come on. I should. Come on. Yeah. But anyhow. Come on. Yeah. To turn our brains into mush. Okay. But <laughs> that is just the facts of the matter. And so we have to be very careful. And holiness is so this... Play, okay, so we're born again of water and spirit. We're in the body of Christ. Okay, Christ is the second Adam or the last Adam. So our job is to walk in holiness. Now God loves us so much he even made after we're born again of water and spirit if any man sins we have an advocate with the Father. But notice if not when. That is false doctrine to teach just because you're a human that you have to sin every day. You do not have to sin every day. If you're born again of water and spirit. But this is the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You do not have to sin every day. You can live free from sin. And it is a blessing. It is not legalism. So Satan tries to make the world look so good. So we will go into the world. But we're in the world, but not of the world. Jesus prayed. Now you might say, well, I just think we ought to live in some whatever commune or something somewhere jesus didn't pray that he prayed for you and i in john 17 Amen. but he prayed father i pray not that you take them out of the world 
but that you would keep them from the evil. So Jesus prayed his church would be holy because the only way you and I are going to be saved is through holiness. So the born again experience, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the only way for us to be saved. Yes. Then the only way to stay saved is to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost in holiness. Amen. Come on. Because nothing, he's coming back for a church that is without Spot. Spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. I love when Paul does that. God would anoint him to write. He's like, I'm not being illegal. So if you're even close to this. Okay. Because like when he lists the, the works of the flesh, he does 17 works of the flesh. And then the 18th is, or anything like this. Okay. I love Paul. He just, he's so cool. 2 Corinthians 13. He's just writing. He's saying bye to everybody. He says, oh, by the way, be perfect. <laughs> be perfect. <laughs> and it's like, okay. <laughs> so, and this is why we have to pray. We have to speak with tongues. We have to yield ourselves to God. Yes. That's why we have to stay in the Word of God. That's why we have to get together the more off. Is so we can live an overcoming life in this world. And I dare say there's a chance the United States of America has more wickedness and temptation than has ever existed. Because the internet's never existed to our knowledge. Uh, ever. And so there's more wickedness and temptation, television. You know, the founder of the Church of Satan in 1992, he wrote a book called The Devil's Notebook. It's kind of fascinating reading what, you know, enemies of the truth have to say. But he wrote about television. He said, well, television, obviously Satan's device. He said it used to be people got their standards from a church with a cross on top. He said now they get it from the church of TV with the antenna on top. <laughs> That's how they learn to talk. That's how they learn to dress. This is where they learn everything. And uh, he said, now television is going to bring in the new satanic world order into the world. And so we're sitting here watching this in real time. That was 29 years ago. He wrote that. And you and I are sitting here living that. All right. This is what's happening. And... Uh, so then he said to the Satanist, he said, now, he said, now, my fellow Satanist, he said, you need to turn your television sets to the wall or better yet get rid of them lest we be ensnared with our own infernal devices. Because he said it's not an accident that the first public broadcast of television was on April 4th, 1939, Walpurgsnight, which is the second highest holy day of the Satanic New Year, of the Satanic Year. He said, because we have a work to do. We have a work to do. So holiness, if you don't mind, let everybody say holiness. holiness. Holiness is the privilege of the sons and daughters of the king. Yes. It is not the legalism that Satan tries to put on it. Come on now. You are not free to sin. Come on. You are free from sin. Hallelujah. Amen. And don't ever think just because the world is so bad that God's going to wink, wink, and you're going to be okay because God understands that the world, because the world's just always been bad. Mm. Live for God. Yeah. And uh, holiness is a privilege of the kingdom. Yeah. So that your eyes are understanding being lightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Yeah. So now think of this for a few moments. Think of this. When the best time you've ever had in the Holy Ghost, you know, it feels so good. And you can have that every day, by the way. It doesn't have to be camp. It doesn't have to be fresh oil. It doesn't have to be a conference. There doesn't have to be a thousand people around. You can have that every day in your prayer closet. Amen. Come on. You can have that on Wednesday night Bible study when there's 30 people here. Yes. Let's go. Uh, there has to be a crowd. And the music has to be kicking. And court has to be leading worship. All right. No. That's right. God is great. Yes. You worship God because of His greatness, not because of exterior things. That's right. Amen. Come on. Worship Him according to His excellent greatness. The best worship services probably I've ever personally been in have been overseas with maybe no music or spoons. 
as music. Outside. Or in a hut. <laughs> so, how good of a worship service is, is depends on how much you love Jesus. Amen. Come on, Let's go. If you love Jesus, you're just going to worship God. You worship because He's good. So, don't get Americanized in worship. That's right. We cannot have church unless we got a purple wall with a light up there. Oh, no. I mean, that is just insanity. I'm not against purple walls with light. Come on. You know, kind of like seances. No, I'm just joking. Um, I, that's a joke. Um, you have to know my sense of humor. But no, I'm not against purple walls with lights and the ambiance and all that. Lights down low. Oh, you can't worship with the lights on, you know, because we can. God forbid we should. people should see us worship. <laughs> You know, children of light. So we have to be careful, too, that we're not conformed to the image of the world. Because the Bible did say people would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And these type of things. So the hope of His calling. So think about the best time you've ever had in the Holy Ghost. Prayer closet, whatever, 2,000 people, whatever the case is. The best time you and I have ever had in the Holy Ghost. Now, you know, if you could magnify that by many billions of times, yes. and it will never end. Come on. That's the hope of his calling. Yes. Come never on. being sick again. Never having another physical imperfection ever. Hallelujah. Never having the ability to be tempted again. Low, right? Hallelujah. Ever. Low. Once you're there, you're there. Yes. So the hope of his calling. And so this extends far beyond this mortal terrestrial world. Yeah. So what is the hope of his calling? And so this is what Paul was praying to the Ephesians. He's like, man, you guys might be under persecution, but I need you to see you're part of something not just bigger, but way bigger. Yes. Way mind-blowingly bigger yes. than you're going. Lord. But he said, she said, they said, drama said. Way bigger. Yes. Way bigger. Yes. There's never an excuse Come on. to not serve Jesus. Ever. Yeah. Come on. We come up with all this ridiculous stuff about church hurt and stuff. None of that. It, well, Jesus is amazing. All the other stuff is just excuses Come on. to not serve Jesus. My God. And so when your eyes are open to the hope of his calling, yes. this is a big deal. Yes. And that's what the, the thing is. It's, it's not necessary to draw a crowd. We're go, supposed to go into all the world and teach all nations. But the key is, first of all, you've got to have the right message when they get here. Yes. The Atlanta Braves are, are rocking right now. Come on. The Georgia Bulldogs. I read an article in a headline. It said the state of Georgia is vibing. The state of Georgia is vibing. Because the Braves are evidently up 3-1 to one in the World Series. The Georgia Bulldogs are ranked number one. They just beat the Florida Gators. One of the few times the Bulldog will ever beat a Gator, but did in football. And, uh, and so the state of Georgia is vibing. Well, see, the church is always vibing. The Bulldogs could be 0-8. And the Braves could be the worst thing or, or repatriate to Milwaukee or wherever they go, Boston before that. We're, I mean, we've got the best thing going. The church is always the best thing going. Come on, up. Amen. Always. Oh. Yeah. And Jesus has never lost a battle. Come on. And so what is the hope of his calling? Oh, yeah. So knowing that when you see him, you'll be like him. You'll never be sick again. This is amazing. Hallelujah. This is incredible. Yeah. And uh, so we need our eyes opened to understand the hope of calling. What the riches of the glory of. Now, this is a key. The glory of his inheritance in the saints. Yes. His inheritance. There's it. Okay, so what does God get of all this? God's just love, and he saw us, a bunch of slobs that were headed to the lake of fire, the second death, and uh, he just decided to come. Well, there, that's a big part of it, but it's not the whole part of it. Come on, that's right. All right. The glory, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. He gets you. Hallelujah. 
What God gets out of all this is free moral agents in the image of God that choose willingly to serve and obey Him. Yes. And He lavishes you like a bride with the greatest things in all of the universe. It's almost indescribable, but the Bible does describe it. That is His inheritance. He gets, he gets a family. He gets a bride. He's got people He can relate to after His own kind. Reason we have to have the Holy Ghost. Reason we have to have the name of Jesus. So we can be after his kind. Yes. Hallelujah. Because he made us a little lower than the angels, but then we're born again of water and spirit. He, we get to be with Jesus forever. So we usually talk about what we get out of the deal. Paul is saying this is what God gets out of the deal. Yes. God gets you and I. Yes. And so this is why we just need a heart. Everybody, we all need a heart to say, God, I'll serve you. It doesn't matter. I'll serve you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, all of my strength. Regardless of the pain, regardless of the hurt, regardless of the heartache, regardless of what I have to give, regardless. Because I get you and you're the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. And you, you are the, the hope of the world. You're the one that fills my my deepest longings and feels my need. Don't ever, you know, looking for a soulmate. So Jesus is your soulmate. He's the only one that can fulfill the longings in your heart. Yes. And so the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what he gets is somebody that loves him, that chose to go against the world, to go against the grain, to go against everything in this fallen world, and to say, God, it doesn't matter. I'm going to serve you. This is the reason we have to love God above our family, our husbands, our wives, our daughters, our sons, our aunts, our uncles, our grandchildren. We have to love God above of everything because he's our heavenly father so we have to say and we don't want anything we want them all to be in the family we want family salvation but that doesn't always happen sometimes a man's foes are those of his own household and we have to say God I choose you he chose us but, but I choose you and that's what he gets the glory of his inheritance in the saints he inherits you you say, but I'm, wor I'm a dog. I'm sorry. We understand all that. But it's, it's, it's His righteousness. It's His spirit. It's His love. It's His name. Yes. It's His born again experience. Yes. But it was somehow a heart that said, I love you more than I love the world. I turn my back on the treasures of Egypt. Yeah. Come on. And I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. And Jesus yes. like, that's who I want with me throughout all eternity. Amen. You get, in my father's house are many mansions. He's got a big house with a bunch of mansions in it. Here people get excited about mansions and castles. But think up there. In my father's house are many mansions. 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles of pure gold. What we fight over. Every ounce of gold that has ever been mined would fit inside an Olympic swimming pool. Every piece of gold that's ever been mined here on earth would fit inside an Olympic swimming pool. What people fight over, they call pothole filler in heaven. I mean, it's just, and it's transparent, and it's pure. Pure gold is transparent. What gives gold its yellow color is impurities in it. And so it's pure gold. And you'll be like Jesus could walk through walls in his resurrected body and all. This is going to be you and I. So the inheritance, what God gets out of this whole unfolding drama of redemption is you, a pure and holy people. And we were not able to get anywhere close to done with this Sunday school lesson. Because we still have verses 19, 20, 21, and 22, and 23 to go. But if we did that, it'd be really late.
But just know the glory of the church, that you're part of something, the biggest thing in the world. Believers in China underground, believers in North Korea underground, believers in Cuba underground, people three or four meeting under a tree in Africa, people whose families have kicked them out all over the world, that happens, serving Jesus Christ. Most places that meet for church on Sundays and through the week, if you ever have a chance to go on a foreign missions trip, this reason we took... The, our last church, we took the uh, youth group to southern Mexico to let them see what church overseas was like. Because most people are meeting, usually there's, there's a wall or a ceiling missing somewhere. Mm. In, unless they're just meeting under a tree somewhere. And they're there for hours. They'll walk. The thing that Brother Ladd always said that broke him about Africa, you know, he was a missionary so long in Africa, is the people that would walk so far to go to church. 13, 14 miles to go to church one way. Just to go to church. And then walk back after working six days, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. Because they just wanted to go to church. And those folks are beautiful in the sight of God. And they're kings and priests, and they're going to rule and reign with Jesus. And uh, I hate to say it, most of the body of Christ is going to come from overseas. But the availability is for you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we pray together? Let's ask God that our eyes would be open, that we can understand the greatness of His power and His glory. Let's everybody pray. Why don't we stand to our feet and let's pray together. God, I glorify You. I love You, Jesus. I thank You for the Holy Ghost, God. Let everybody here receive the Holy Ghost, God. Let everyone want the Holy Ghost, God. Jesus, let everybody get the Holy Ghost. Get baptized in Your holy name, God. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, give a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, God. Jesus, that we can know what is the hope of our calling. Yes. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In your holy name, Jesus. In your holy name. Yes.